So here's a really big question that I have for you guys. Do you want to start editing and making high quality content, but you don't have the money to invest in a program like Premiere Pro or Sony Vegas? Do you want to learn how to bring your content game to the next level without breaking the bank? If at any point so far you have answered yes, keep watching this video. I cannot tell you the amount of mentions I've gotten on Twitter and the amount of comments you guys have left on my videos on this channel asking for me to review a free editing software. And it's taken me some time to make this video because I really wanted to do some research and find a software that I think would be best for you guys. For the first six months of my editing career, I edited videos on Fiverr with Windows Movie Maker. And sure enough, after working for a couple months with a free editing software, I saved up money to move over to Sony Vegas, which I used for about five months until I made the final switch to Premiere Pro, which I still use today. But the main point of this is everything starts somewhere. I don't know each of your individual walks in content creation or editing, but I know there are going to be some people out there that watch this video that are desperate to find a way to edit videos for free. I made a couple of editing tutorials on this channel and I have not had a single video yet where you guys have not mentioned the program DaVinci Resolve. I had never heard of DaVinci before, but apparently it's super user friendly, has very high praise, and best of all, it's free. So that's what today's video is all about. I've never used DaVinci Resolve before, nor have I ever watched any videos on how to edit with the software. I've downloaded this going into it completely blindly, seeing how easy is it for me to adapt to it right off the bat. I'm going to try my best to edit a pre-recorded clip within the program and give you guys a comprehensive review of what I actually think of this software. That's what we're gonna do today. I'm here to help you, but you can help me too If you're watching this video and you find it helpful or you just enjoy the content consider subscribing and joining the family We have a very tightly knit community over here And I'd be very happy to have you a part of it as well now that you've subscribed and we have that out of the way We have to look at DaVinci Resolve So as you guys can see here We have DaVinci Resolve open and we're ready to start working. So again, this is a free version of DaVinci Resolve There also is a paid version I believe that comes with more features and effects and all the bells and whistles that this program will not come with But we are mainly focused on the free aspect. How good is this for being a software that costs you no money whatsoever? I think we're just gonna start a new project and call this sub to Dakaja. Cool, thank you. We're almost at 10,000. <clears> okay, so here we go. This is our this is our timeline. Everything looks pretty simple so far. We have like a media pool or project bent over to the left where all of our clips will probably go. Our timeline down here, our preview window to the right. And it looks like we have some easy access panels down below that will bring us to different places of the program. First things first of any project, we gotta have footage to edit. So I'm gonna try to find like an import button. Okay, import, import media, cool. I need to clean up my PC because I have so many recordings left on here. So everything's imported here. I guess we're just gonna drag it to the timeline. Okay, this is pretty simple so far. I think this is like a dedicated panel just for making cuts. You can see there's a little tool on the left here that when you click, it makes a cut within the timeline here. I'm not too crazy about having to go to the left and hit a button every single time you want to make a cut. So let's go to the edit tab and see if this looks any better. This looks like something we can work with. So we got our timeline here with our video clip up top and the audio track down below. I think right under me, we have like an effects panel for keyframing and everything. This seems to be the different effects and filters we can apply to the video and audio tracks. Looks pretty simple to use so far. You can see we have all the basic tools that we're going to need. So far before I've done any work, it looks rough relatively user friendly in the edit panel at least. I wasn't too crazy about everything starting out initially in the cut panel, but I do like the fact that the panels are on the bottom. They're like easy to get to. They have nice design. I really like this color grading station they got going on. A dedicated audio panel, and I guess this panel right here is just for exporting projects. I'm gonna go into this and try to cut everything up and see how fast I can make the rough cut come together. I'll time it on my phone here and we'll see just how long this takes me on a program I've never used. All right, got the timer on the screen. Let's go ahead and start making a rough cut. Oh, well. <laughs> Everything's already uh, not responding, cool. You can see that took me about seven total minutes to get like a rough cut going, which is not bad. There was a couple of things that I noticed about the rough cut process initially. So one really cool feature I will say that I did like is that when you, for instance, made a cut somewhere in a clip and then you deleted that part where you cut, the rest of the timeline automatically slides back to where you just made the cut. So you don't have to worry about leaving any dead space. The program will automatically drag it back for you. That was something really cool that I saw that Premiere actually doesn't do. The only thing I really noticed when I was making that 
that rough cut is that it was a little bit laggy, a little bit hitchy for whatever reason. I don't really know why that is. And it feels like whenever I made a cut initially, it was about a frame or two off from where I actually wanted the cut to happen. So when you're using this program, I recommend zooming in all the way so you can see your audio bars and stopping it exactly where you want it to. But honestly, other than that, that was a smooth process. That took me a little bit longer than it probably would on Premiere Pro just because of the hitchiness and me having to go back and make sure everything is tightly knit together. But now that we have that there, we got to look into the more in-depth stuff now. What we're about to look at now is really the bread and butter of how good of a software this program is. We see that it can make a decent rough cut, but we really want to find out how we can bring this video to life. So if you notice right under me, or if I move my webcam over here, over there now, this is the keyframe panel. And I I'm looking at it and I already see a couple problems. The main one being there is no like timeline for me to track where my keyframes are. If you guys are unfamiliar with what a keyframe is, it's basically a starting point for the program to know, hey, we're about to make a zoom in or some kind of movement happen. So when I click this button right here, it tells the program, hey, everybody pay attention. We're about to do something. And then I go over a couple of frames in the footage. I hit the button again and it tells the program to stop. That's the end point of the production. So with that zoom in place, this is kind of what happens. It zooms in on your face. And yeah, it's great that we have the ability to keyframe, but I cannot see where those keyframes are made. What this pretty much means is I have to be completely reliant on my ability to stop and start exactly where I want it to go. Now it's going to take a lot of a little bop, 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 like that. Bop. Like you gotta get it just right. And then the program's a little hitchy with how it displays the rough cut already. So I, I mean, I'm just seeing a lot of issues with keyframes off the bat, but it doesn't make it impossible. I'm nearly 100% certain this is gonna make the final cut process be about twice as long as it normally has to be. But I think the positive thing to know is that there is keyframes in place on this program that you can use. But if we look back on the other side here, you can see that all of the effects and everything we're gonna play around with are also in place. A very crucial thing to know about the effects panel with Individual Resolve is that you're not gonna have access to all all the effects you think you will off the bat. If I try to use this lens blur here, you can see I get a message that I need to buy the full DaVinci Resolve Studio. But honestly, I find it kind of annoying that they put this right in front of your face and you don't know what's gonna be free and what's not until you test every one of these out. I get why they do it because they wanna prompt you to buy the full thing. But just from a user standpoint where you're like, oh, I wanna use a cool DCTL Resolve FX color effect. And then I find out, oh, never mind, I can't. That's a part of the paid for version as well. So there were four main things I wanted to test out with this video. The ability to implement and keyframe a text onto the screen. Stupid face effects, you can add comedy, maybe a little bit of a shake effect. What kind of vocal or audio effects do we have for like an echo? And finally, I need to test out the chroma or green screen ability of this program. So let's test out that text first. Let's see what we can do with that. I think it was right about here that I brought up the text. Let me see what this clip says. Right about here. Okay, so I want the text to kind of pop out of my hands to give it a nice fluid effect to make it actually look like I brought it out of thin air. All right, so right about here is where I say text. So our text will be sub to duck omega lol so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start the keyframe and move it over just a little bit so let's make it a little bit bigger i don't know how it's gonna be i don't know if this is gonna be bad or not let's let's test it out text on the screen right about here hey that worked out pretty well that wasn't that bad text works at least we're able to add in text maybe we can do some other effects to it to give it some life at the very end so the next thing we need to do is make my face look stupid because it it doesn't already right Right. All right, what stupid effects we got? Let's go down to the filters option. We have like a warp effects panel here. So let's see what we got with a dent. What does a dent look like? You guys have our Omega LOL. <laughs> Maybe vortex. That sounds like it. Yeah, that's what we want right there. Okay, cool. So we want to keyframe this vortex to come in as soon as I say the word stupid. Let's keyframe that as well. Right, let's see what that looks like. Maybe that's better. Some stupid effects to my face. Still a little off timing. I'm gonna have to fix it in the final production, but okay. We got some cool effects that can go on our face. Make some things look a little warpy, put some lens distortion. Oh, I can't do lens distortion. I gotta pay $300. Let's move on to the next thing. We gotta look at some audio effects because I did ask for an echo if I remember correctly. We have, oh, perfect echo. Echo's right there. Let's use that. Let's see what the natural echo sounds like once we put it on. I felt some echo! Oh wow, that's pretty echoey, not gonna lie. The last thing I want to test out is these anime green screen lines. So here it is. I'm gonna put this over top of everything else here. Now that I have it in my timeline, I need to drag it right over top of where I asked for it. Buy some anime. Okay, right about here. Now the question is, do we have access to a green screening tool in our effects panel? Don't see anything in here that could let us use like an ultra key or some kind of chroma key though. Wow, maybe they actually don't have anything for it. Maybe I'm missing it. Let me know in the comment section down below if you can actually chroma key things in. So chromatic aberration is an option as well, but I can't use it because it's not free. So maybe this is what it was. Frick, dude. Okay, we tried our best. All right, well, okay. So a full comprehensive review. Everything seems very user friendly. The last test is going to be me going through and adding my sound effects and my zooms. But I'll let you guys know what the final product looks like.
looks like when I get it finished. But we need to see how long it takes for me to make a full cut out of this. All right, let's get it going in three, two, one. Okay, I just wrapped everything up and that took me right about 22 minutes. Focus! There we go, 22 minutes and 7 seconds. A bit longer than I wanted to, um, to take with that edit, but some things are definitely finicky with it. Some very odd things I noticed is that if I have this audio track going and I want to cut out this section, if I cut that out, it then deletes the whole section above me for some reason. So I would have to, like, make the cut and then drag it out here and then delete it so it wouldn't do anything weird. That was the first weird thing I'll mention. Other than that, there wasn't too too much else that really sucked. I mean, the keyframes weren't fun, but I kind of got into that earlier. Let me show you guys what I just spent the last 20 minutes doing. Honestly, let me know what you think about this. This isn't much. There are a lot of things I'm limited to with this edit, but take a look at it right about now. <laughs> This microphone on. So this is a video purely for running a couple of tests. First things first, we're gonna bring some text on the screen right about here. Does it look good? What about some stupid effects to my face? Does my face look stupid right now? I felt some, some echo. echo! Is there any echo? What do I do now? I want everything to be in slow motion. Okay, I think I'm done. <laughs> that was extremely short, but you can see I used some of the key features that a lot of good edits have. And quite honestly, see, if you were a viewer watching this video, you would have never known I edited this video with a free software. As an editing software, out of 10, I would probably give it like a solid seven. But as someone who may be brand new to this and getting right into video editing, this is perfect for making any video that you want. I like everything here. It's a very nice program for being free. I definitely recommend trying it out. You have nothing to lose as it costs you literally no money. So if you want to try DaVinci Resolve out for yourself, I'll have the link in the description down below. Let me know your personal experience with it, how you're getting along, if you have any questions about the software. Let me know what you guys want to see in the comments down below, or if you have any other ideas for videos, come tell me about it on my Twitch live stream, where I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I would love to see you in chat. Who knows, some of your ideas might make its way onto my channel as a video. But yeah, I think that covers just about everything for me. DaVinci Resolve actually surprised me. Definitely worth the money. Which is, which is no money. <laughs> Hopefully you did enjoy this video, and if you did and you don't mind doing so, go ahead and drop a sub like, man. That's a subscribe, a like, and a comment, and I will see you in the next video.